uh, with a, with a, an event like this, and we still don't know exactly who these folks are. Um, but this is a small community in, in in rural Indiana, and I want them to know that they're going to get any and all resources that they need to make sure this comes to a successful resolution. I just unveiled the person that we believe responsible for the murder of these two little girls. What would have changed in the investigation for your department to say, we now need to release this sketch that we've had? Information from tips. That's all I can say. And when it comes to sketches, Superintendent Carter urges people to pay attention to both. A sketch is not a photograph. It's something that a person remembers about what they saw. And I believe that when we identify who this person is, and we will, that we'll be able to take those two sketches and fold them over each other and put them on the individual's face. Two years later, a very different sketch of what investigators believed the killer looked like. That was a very significant shift for us. And we had fully anticipated the criticism. Um, but remember, a sketch is not a photograph. And I think what eventually what we'll be able to do is, is put the face of the murderer up in between those two sketches, and we'll be able to merge them together and, and, and become sketch one. Sketch is not a photograph. Right. It's something similar to a resemblance. And um, the, the, the likelihood of this being something of, be between the two is probably pretty strong. But again, that's a subjective opinion based upon what I what I picture I that's been put out that was put out in April is more of a scenario of who we think may be more involved in the other. We're not saying that the other one is not him with the information that we've gotten in tips and, and uh, interviews that we've we've been having over the last two years that we feel that this face may be more of what the, the subject looks like. And so that's why we've kind of changed directions, went to this one, and uh, we're still pretty adamant that that's the person that we're looking for. There was some confusion and some blame and some criticism of, of us. Um, that criticism needs to come to me, to no, not to anybody else, um, because I, I, I absolutely supported that change. And I think there, there will be enough similarities in this person when we find him that we'll be able to see it in both. Yeah, I definitely, I, I just have a feeling that it's somewhere in the middle. Mm -hmm. So when, Everything happened in the beginning. I didn't I didn't have a face. Like I have really bad nightmares and so we didn't have a face. And then like I don't know, like a week later, like before the sketch was released, he suddenly had one and it was not the new sketch, not the old one, but it was somewhere in the middle. Mm -hmm. And so I always try to figure out what that face is. Like maybe I do know him, maybe I have met him, and that's the face, like I'm giving it with the voice, I just don't know it yet. You're you Kelsey, you are spot on. I wish everybody would look at this that way because the similarities, and let me back up, when people look at that sketch, they think, oh my gosh, that person is 20 years younger than the initial one, and they view it as a photograph. Mm -hmm. That is not what a sketch is. And it's really, really, really important people look at it like you do, mm -hmm. and understand that it's going to be somewhere in the middle, or there'll be some similarities between those uh, with a booking photo that I know we're going to get one day. Yeah. And I'm really looking forward to the day I can look in his eyes and tell him how much I don't like him. I'm looking forward to that day. Yeah, I'll stand with you. Yeah, I can't wait. Okay, at the conference... Multi-agency task force clarifies points about the Delphi murder suspect sketches. In the early days and months of the Delphi murder investigation, information was developed about suspect descriptions. It was initially believed the sketch that has been in public view over the last two years of a person in the age range of his 40s to 50s was a person of interest in this murder investigation. Now, as the investigation has matured and past information has been reassessed, it is the belief of investigators with the multi-agency task force that the person depicted in the sketch released on April 22nd more accurately represents the person wanted for the murders of Abigail Williams and Liberty German. It is important to distinguish these points about the two sketches. One, they are not the same person. Two, the person depicted in the originally released sketch is not presently a person of interest in this investigation note, they didn't say not presently a suspect. Three, the sketch released on April 22nd is representative 
of the face of the person captured in the video on Liberty German's cell phone as he was walking on the high bridge. Number four, the person in the sketch released April 22nd is described as having a youthful appearance, but could fall in the age range from his 20s to late 30s. Five, the person's appearance could look different today if he has grown a mustache, beard, or let his hair grow longer or cut his hair shorter than depicted in the sketch. Members of the Delphi community should reflect back on people they know in the community that look similar to the sketch released on April 22nd, especially if that person has changed their appearance since the murders occurred in February of 2017. Any specific information that says the person is local or from far away? No. Could this be a stranger crime? That's a possibility. Could this be somebody that knew that the girls were going to be there at that time? That's a possibility. Nothing is off the table. Uh, we know that there are going to be lots of questions that, that we specifically cannot answer because there are things that we do not want to tip our hand to the person that's responsible for this. Uh, that kind of information we're keeping close to ourselves. Is it reasonable to think that uh, that's an area? One of, one of two things happen. That was a chance encounter. That's possible. Don't think it's likely, but it's possible or that person knew that they were going to be there. That's possible as well. Those are things that we're looking to. Question over here. To date, how many persons of interest and in suspects have police looked at and what makes a person a person, what makes a person a suspect as opposed to a person of interest? Well, everybody's a person of interest in almost anything that we do. And I can't speak specifically to this with the number of people that there are, but Again, we work these from the worst case scenario and then back, mm. backwards. Um, so that number would be a lot, but that would be up to the detectives, not me. John, uh, you released a sketch of, of how do I phrase it? Early on, you released a sketch, and later you released a different sketch. Right. Why have the sketches changed so dramatically? Well, the investigations evolve. <clears throat> One of the things that I've said consistently throughout this entire process, Rich, is that, remember, a sketch is not a photograph, but there will be pieces and parts of that sketch that will make that photograph whole, you see. So if we didn't evolve with information and we didn't evolve with what we know, uh, then shame on us. Unfortunately, we're not in a position where we can tell everybody why we switch gears, why we make a, a slight turn to the right or a slight turn to the left. And that's where the speculation begins, and that's where the animosity comes, and the frustration. And I, I understand it. I do understand it. Um, because very selfishly, there's, there's other than the family of Abby and Libby in that community up there, there's nobody that, that wants to, to find this monster more than me. In the past, you've said, we have likely interviewed the killer. Do you still think that? I think that um, we're not going to singularly identify anyone right now, at least publicly. I'd like to talk about these two sketches that were released years apart by investigators. The images have caused quite a bit of speculation, also some confusion. Are there two suspects that you're looking for? There are not. There are not. I saw some uh, some coverage tonight where I saw uh, Becky Patty be, was interviewed back in 2019 when that was done. And, uh, and I'm she said tonight it was like a gun punch, and I, I felt that gun punch tonight because I, I would never, ever intentionally cause that to happen. Again, this is this, this is is very strategic, and I really believe, Marnie, that eventually we're going to take both of those sketches. Remember, a sketch is not a photograph, but we'll take both of those sketches and we'll put them together, and then remove them, and the killer will be behind them. So, so is the there's sketch pieces a of. of Sorry, go ahead. No, 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 go ahead, please. I was just gonna ask, is the sketch, how does the public receive this information? Is the sketch, the ultimate suspect, a combination of these two images put on this body that we're seeing on screen right now? Yes, I believe, I, I believe that we'll, we'll, we'll be able to put the two of them together 
and drop the drop the sketch, and and that will be the, that will be the person responsible for the death of Abby and Libby. And I think what eventually what we'll be able to do is, is put the face of the murderer up in between those two sketches and we'll be able to merge them together and, and, and become one. we have to remember and realize this, has, this was such a high profile case as it should have been and as it still is frankly that there were there there's a lot still to this day going on on the internet 
with people communicating and talking in different groups and, and putting side-by-side -side comparisons with a coworker or whoever that might be, eventually they're going to be right. Or eventually we're going to be right. Or you're going to be right. Whatever, whatever. 